players from this region like a chance to show themselves because of course you know some of them are you'll make their way to all the other internationals around the world but not all of them necessarily would get the opportunity to do so so this is really the biggest chance for a lot of latin american players to shine and to show what they're made of Absolutely, yeah. It almost feels like the Latin America region feels a little disconnected from the rest of the circuit. You know, we don't see as many of the players across uh, all the other international levels. Of course, we do see them do very well whenever they travel, but um, I think it's partially like, you know, the language is different from the rest of the, war uh, the other three regions, right? So we just don't really quite hear as much about them, but, you know, these players are excellent and they really want to prove that here on this stage. Yeah, they, they very much do, and... Uh as we see, like both players are pretty much almost like ready to go at this point. Both shuffle, both shuffled up, and uh, we see where they're presenting for for the cuts. And we're going to see who is going to take who, who's going to take it home in this round two. Is it going to be Patricia or is it going to be Ricardo? Yeah, and Ricardo is actually now that I'm looking a little bit more closely at his list, he's playing a really interesting one. And this is a list that Azul was actually posting about uh, recently online. I saw, you know, we've talked about Azul recently, um, but it's got the multiple Marnies, multiple Path to the Peak, which is kind of counterintuitive to Mew, right? And four copies of Lost Vacuum. So the goal of this deck is to throw Path to the Peak in play, play Marnie, disrupt your opponent, use that Lost Vacuum, get rid of the Path, use your abilities, and then put another Path in play. Yeah, so this, um, it, to me, it's very reminiscent of a deck of the past, Zorok Garbodo. Like, you know, the, day w the way that deck worked was basically similar sort of concepts. You shut off your opponent's abilities during their turn, but during your turn, you'll have your abilities back on you and do your thing. Yeah. This Mew deck is basically built in the same way with the high loss vacuum count and the path count. You're trying to do that one-sided ability lock. Yes, so very strong when you can get it set up. Now, it is a little counterintuitive. Like I mentioned, Mew is like the ability deck of the format, right? You want to use that Fusion Strike System ability on the Genesect V as many times as you can every single turn. So it feels a little counterintuitive to be playing Path to the Peak in your deck, but if you can time things out and sequence it just right, it can be so devastating to your opponent for them to not have access to their uh, rule box Pokemon abilities and for you to be able to. Now, I will say, in this matchup, Probably not going to be super relevant. No. It, it, it can be good against the Drapion. I guess that's the big thing, right? Put the path in play and then hope that Drapion's ability isn't activated. So hoping that um, that is something that Ricardo is going to pull off as we get to see the prize cards here. A little rough over on Patricia's side, prizing the Radiant Charizard oh. and a Sableye. Ricardo has prized a Marnie and a Roxanne. One cross switcher is a little awkward, but really nothing too bad. Over on Patricia's side, though, that those two prizes could be tough. Yeah, Radiant Charizard is really not something you want to have in the prizes, especially that far up as well, because it's probably going to take a while for Patricia to be able to take that out of the prizes. So that's going to be double rough for her. Um, and as we see there, now we are we are off here in round two. Looks like uh, Ricardo's going to be going first. Starts off with a Cramomatic, uh, discarding a Lost Vacuum, and does get ahead. Great way to start the game off. Use that Cramomatic, a really strong item card. Of course, you have to discard an item from your hand in order to use it. You flip a coin, and if you get heads, you get to search your deck for any card. You don't have to show it to your opponent, but Ricardo's just going to go ahead and let us know yeah. Battle VIP Pass is coming down. Yeah. I think Patricia also would have known straight away what Ricardo's <laughs> yeah, going for. Absolutely. Like, this is absolutely the go-to turn one if you get heads on a Cramomatic. Battle VIP Pass, as we mentioned in round one. Just lets you grab any two basic Pokemon from your deck and put them onto the bench as long as you play it on your first turn. After that, it's not very useful, but of course, in, unlike in some other decks, in the Mew deck, it actually can be okay in the terms of that it can be just discard fodder for other Chromomatics. Yes, it works out. I mean, this is the deck that it probably fits in the best. Nothing else to thin the hand down here, though, for Ricardo, so we don't see any abilities utilized, and Patricia will start the turn off with a Quick Ball, losing a Psychic Energy, and can eye up a... Basic Pokemon and Drapion coming to the front of the deck right away. There's only one Mew V in play for Ricardo. Oh, that oh, that could be very, very dangerous territory. Patricia only needs one energy to attack with that Drapion V and get a knockout on the Mew. Yes, that is huge. Of course, with the three Fusion Strike Pokemon in play, Drapion's attack does only cost one energy thanks to that wild style ability. So Dynamic Tail could be utilized for just one energy, and this is kind of a little bit of a gamble from Patricia because if Ricardo is playing the Fusion Strike build of the deck, then you know he could theoretically respond with a Meloetta KO on this Drapion, but if he's not playing the Fusion Strike build, I mean, this is just such a good play. 
because there's no way that Ricardo can attack next turn. And actually, I think to be fair, even if Ricardo is playing the Fusion Strike build, you KO the one Mew that's out, all that's left is like a, you know, a Genesect, which can, is a little bit harder to retreat. I think Patricia is still like fine regardless. No, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's still a good play yeah, regardless. Yeah. I'm just saying it's maybe a little bit sketchier, you could yeah, say. Potentially, it, yeah. A little bit more awkward of a spot. But yes. yeah, here comes the Comfy does Lost Zone 1 choice belt. We see one card into the Lost Zone here. Who almost attached to the active. Can't do that if you want to attach to the Drapion. And sure enough, Dynamic Tail takes a two-prize KO, and Ricardo already so far on the back foot. Wastes no time there at all with the, with the retreat, uh, retreat and the attachment just to get that Dynamic Tail going. And uh, there's the pass to the peak. <laughs> Would have been, uh, been nice to see that a bit sooner, unfortunately, but uh, it just came one turn too late and uh, for that poor, poor Mew. Quick Ball does ditch a Marnie, can grab another Mew out of the deck, and Ricardo just kind of hoping that it'll stick around at this point. This play from Patricia does set her up a little bit slower, though. There is no... Only one card in the Lost Zone, right? So that's a, a big thing. Only having one card in the Lost Zone is not where you want to be. You want to get as many cards down as quickly as possible because you need 10 cards in the Lost Zone to start attacking with Lost Mine on the Sableye. Yeah, and I think, obviously, Patricia kind of doing that calculation and uh, thinking to herself, okay, this is worth it regardless because I do essentially put myself in such a big lead by, by being able to KO the enemy Mew. But it's something you have to think about as well. And uh, I'm sure Patricia in the next turn will probably want to get a few more cards in the Lost Zone and start... Uh, you know, setting herself up a bit more for the later game. Patricia does play two copies of Lost Vacuum, but her only stadium in the deck is actually two copies of Path to the Peak. So won't be able to bump the stadium with a with a different stadium. It'll have to be with that Lost Vacuum to Lost Zone that card. Yeah. We do see that uh, Ricardo going through his turn. After playing Imani, does go for a quick ball discarding a Battle VIP pass. Very happy to discard that. Sure. And uh, going to grab that second Mew, not wanting to fall victim to another Dynamic Tail, knocking out only Mew shenanigans. Right. And uh, and so now, I think it's going to be on... Because yep. I think the big problem, of course, is that Ricardo did play down the passive peak, so you can't really do much drawing right oh, now. Oh, and Patricia, she, she's just drawn it. There's the Lost Vacuum already oh, in the no. hand. That is super strong. Drapion can just take the knockout on Genesect, take two prize cards, and... Yeah, we're, we're seeing it slam down right away. This Wait. is such a big lead. No, no, doesn't uh, Patricia need a choice belt? Because it does 170 damage, right? That's not going to... No, it does 190. Oh, it does 190. It does oh, 190. Oh, yep. oh, okay. That, it is. It's too good. Yeah. <laughs> the card's too good against Mew. God, KO Genesect and Mew, my goodness. Yes, super strong. And, I mean, it does have the drawback of having to play 60 damage on your side of the field, but you don't really mind it too much. We saw the last... Hit was soaked up by the Cramorant. Now this one will be soaked up by the Orangaroo. Patricia on turn two takes two more prize cards, only two remaining. You really don't mind, you know, having to do 62 and stuff when you're already four prizes ahead against Mew. This is absolutely devastating for Ricardo. And I, you, you always hate to like, you know, count out a player when it's so early into the game. But, you know, at, at this point, what does Ricardo even do to like make the comeback here? Because, I mean, you have basically almost nothing to work with. It, it's tough. I mean, it starts with knocking out this Drapion, yes, that's for sure. It has to go down this turn. And with Patricia only having two cards in the Lost Zone, there's going to not be too much she can do. She can attack with the Cramorant, you know, do 110 damage as an option at least. But uh, Ricardo, I think, yeah, step one, definitely. Let's, let's try to take out this active Drapion. And we do see that Forest Seal Stone coming into play. Has not been used, but on the other end, of this Genesect, we could see that utilized in order to find whatever other piece you need, be it the double turbo energy potentially in this spot. Yeah, very important thing to talk about, of course, is an interaction that I've seen a lot of discussion, but uh, for those who perhaps might not be aware, one very important thing about Forest Seal Stone is the fact that because the ability itself is on the card and not the Pokemon, you can use it even if Path to the Peak is in play. Yep. Yep, very interesting interaction, but that is how it works out. You're able to still use that V Star power because. Genesect V does not have the ability, it can just use the ability. Yes, yeah, so that means that even under the path of the peak, it doesn't, like, you know, because the ability isn't on a thing with a rule box, it is still available. And it's one of the things that makes Forest Seal Stone so good in Mew because it is essentially, it's another out to pass the peak from your opponent and uh, lets you just get yourself going straight away again with drawing more cards. And especially in this version of the deck where you're playing your own path to the peak, it becomes an out to not only your opponent's path to the peak, but your own <laughs> path to the peak as well. Yeah, just a crazy, crazy good card, especially in this deck. And uh, if there's anything that will elevate Mew, or like either keep Mew where it still, still wasn't the best game, or keep it to uh, maybe elevate it to the next level, it's going to be this card. 
I think it's really one of the um, most uh, important inclusions and new things to come out for this deck from Silver Tempest. Ricardo has found everything he needs here. Double Turbo Energy, Path to the Peak, and did, oh, did use the V-Star Power. I didn't notice that get flipped, but yes, has used it. And it should be, oh no, Power Tablet though. He actually, oh. I think, was discarding some Power Tablets with the Ultra Ball, so that is really interesting. Not enough to take the KO. Patricia just needing a Lost Vacuum, and the game is over. If she has a Lost Vacuum, that is it. There is one copy remaining in the deck. It's, oh my goodness, oh, Escape Rope. So I guess Patricia gonna now be switching into a Comfey, maybe try start doing some Flower Selects and try and dig for you know the out to win uh, that way. Or even, actually, no, you could just retreat. Uh, as long as, it, well, you know, you still find the out for the Path of the Peak, of course, but, like, uh, this gives more options to take the win, actually. I think a scoop-up net was taken off of this Comfy, so we can see this one picked up, go into the other Comfy, and this is, you know, we haven't seen this yet from the deck in no, this no. game, but this is what the deck is supposed to do. Use Comfy time and time again, scoop-up net, switch, air balloon, all these things. Is that the Lost Vacuum? That's the Vacuum. If I think she's got it. Th there's the air balloon, that's it, the game's over. Air balloon, Lost Vacuum, get rid of the path. Retreat and attack, and that will be Patricia taking game one. Wow, what a game from Patricia. Three turns, three KOs, and that is the game. Unless there's a debate happening? Um, seems to be some kind of disagreement. No one's picked up their cards yet. Yeah, um, I think that this should be it. Uh, there wasn't any weird missed switches or anything like that. Everything was scooped up net properly. Wild Style is active. That yeah. that path to the peak, it's still in, on the table, but yeah. it should be in the loss zone, and I I'm think, sure. I think the debate might be around whether Patricia already retreated this turn, but she didn't because, I mean, she wouldn't yeah. have been able to with the Drapion, right? No, was, no. It was, a, it was an escape rope, right? Yeah, yeah it, was yeah. A, it was escape rope, scoop up net, retreat. Yep. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. So we've just got one word. Apparently there may have been two energy attachments in one turn. That's what's been based around. Oh, I don't recall seeing any. Yeah, no. The Drapion has had the fire energy for a few turns now, and the um, did Patricia even attach another energy this turn? No, no right? No, so. Like, so there's one energy in the discard pile. The only one that, that, that was quick balled away. Yeah, uh, so. and Ricardo only has one energy in play. That's, um, okay, so yeah, I'm not quite sure. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, they're just they're just rewinding the game state right now and talking this through. I'm like I'm 99% sure from everything that we've seen that is that this is all legal and above board, right? Yeah, I, don't I think I don't I don't think there was a double attachment, but our judges are going to be on top of it. If there's a chance that something happened, we want to make sure the game resolves as it should. So yes. looks like they're just going to go back through and double check everything. But yeah, I think we should be a okay, and it looks like Patricia's going to close this one out. Okay, so just gonna. So talking just through? talking about this matchup after what we've seen so far, I mean, Ricardo missing the KO on the Drapion there was absolutely huge. I think if Ricardo gets that KO, this game is still going on, most likely. Yes. Um, so I'm, I don't know. I guess he maybe had to discard the Power Tablets at some point. There was definitely a few that got Ultra Balled away in that last turn. Yeah, so I was just like, you know, not being able to see them, right? So yeah, through those sort of combination of factors, yeah, just missing the KO, which, as you said, was absolutely huge. And yeah, we, we can see here, like, going for the discard, there's... Uh, there was no, literally the only energy that's been attached this whole game from Patricia's side was the fire on the Drapion, so yeah. I don't see how a double attachment could have really happened. Yeah, maybe something else that they're looking at potentially. Let's also talk about how Patricia <laughs> was able to find the second Lost Vacuum. She's yes. only got two copies in the deck, <laughs> used one early, uh, hasn't really thinned the deck very well, but no. was able to get into it. That's just sometimes how it goes. Yeah, it, it, was a, it was definitely a fortunate find for her, but I mean, you know, you got to go for it, right? You play Pokemon, you, you play the odds, so you just... Uh, play it to the best you can, and uh, if you find it, you find it, and Patricia did it in that instance. Uh, so, uh, uh, looks like this might be coming to a resolution now, so maybe there might be some cards being picked up. Yeah, it looks like a little bit of like heated discussion. We're getting it quite figured out, but yeah, yeah it looks like cards are getting scooped up now. We'll try to get word on exactly what the result was from our director as soon as we can, but yeah, it looks like we are, regardless of results, going to game two. Yeah, so, so that, so, so, uh, so that game was uh, basically a Drapion Fest. It was yes. Drapion doing what it does best. Turn one, Drapion. Turn two, Drapion. Yes. Turn three, Drapion <laughs> yes. once again. Yes. Yeah, so and yeah, we can now. We have just gone word through. We can confirm Patricia did in fact win game one. So yeah, and you, so it was all it was all resolved. Okay. Yep. All looked good to me. Glad we got it figured out, and we'll get into game number two here shortly. And 
Drapion, man, that's such a strong card. You can see why people choose to include it in this deck for this matchup specifically. I mean, it's not really going to be very good against anything else in the meta. I mean, you can theoretically attack with it against Palkia. You know, if they've got several Sobbles in play, you can get that energy on there and swing for 190 or 220 with a Choice Belt. So there is a cheeky little play you could go for there, but not really something you're ever going to see come up. It is in the deck for this matchup specifically, and you can see why. It is so good as a counter to Movie Max. Yeah, especially so when you're playing against a list that doesn't really have the same level of, you know, ways to eliminate it as a lot of the other Mew lists do. This list, focusing purely on Path to the Peak and not having any Lost City, so just sort of, you know, put it in the Lost Zone and make it not a threat anymore. I mean, sure, the Path to the Peak does shut down the Drapion's ability, but it can be countered a lot more easily. It doesn't, like, get rid of it. It just kind of stops it, and that right. stop can be removed. So here in game number two, any adjustments that you want to see from Ricardo that we didn't really see in game one, or was it just kind of a case of Drapion doing Drapion things? I think the only adjustment that I'd like to see, if possible, and I don't know if it was possible because it was hard to see from Ricardo's hand, more than one Mew down turn one. That, that's, like, sure. that's, that's absolutely like the main thing, because the whole reason why it was so devastating was because of the fact that uh, you know there was only one Mew down, uh, Patricia was able to get the KO on it, and then yeah, that was pretty much all she wrote. But uh, if... Uh, if there was possible to get two Mews down, then at least there would have been the potential for a counter attack. Looks like we're going to start the game off the same way game one started. Ricardo going for the Cramomatic, and once again, that's a heads. Yes, uh, you already love to see a Cramomatic heads. Going to be able to uh, make it so that uh, you can just get that Battle VIP pass straight away. And uh, now we're going to be able to set up as well as he wants. And maybe this time he's thinking, okay, maybe I should think about getting you know, the double Mew going. <laughs> And Battle VIP Pass, yep, here it is. One Genesect in the active. We'll see if one or two Muse gets pulled out. Looks like it's just one for now. What's going to be that second grab? As we do see some prize cards from both players. Ooh, two Fire Energies in the prizes oh. for Patricia. That could be a big deal. You need those to attack with your Radiant Charizard. It is the kind of closer in this deck yeah. and something you can do in this matchup. You can, you know, either Drapion twice into two VMAXs or you can take you know, 2-2-2 two, two, two for your prize cards, and using Radiant Charizard is a good way to do that. So not having access to Fire Energy is going to be a big yeah. deal. I guess the saving grace is, of course, the fact that because it's usually something you attack with in the later game, as long as you can get one of those energies out by then, then you might be fine, right? I think it's uh, that, that it makes it like sort of less bad than it would have been otherwise. Sure, definitely. That is definitely important to note. A second battle VIP pass from Ricardo, very good. Already a much better start. Much, Two much Mews, better. so we're not going to see anything similar to what we saw in the last game. As Force Seal Stone was actually used <laughs> to grab the other VIP pass, I imagine. Yeah, and, and of course, I mean, why not, right? It, it, that's what it's there for. It's uh, there to grab what you need when you need it. And, well, it means that you can't use it later on, but if you can get a, as good a setup as this, then, like, that makes it absolutely worth it. And that's why the card is so strong, right? You can use it early game to guarantee your setup, which is what we saw in this game, or you can use it late game to get out of a sticky situation. Yeah, and we can look at this already. We can see that Ricardo kind of a little bit heads up here thinking, I know Drapion devastated me last turn, so or last game rather. Let me put down the pass of the peak now, because then at least it forces Patricia to find a lost vacuum as well as a Drapion to get a knockout on this Genesect. Yep, doesn't even need the energy this time, so that is definitely good to note for Patricia. Needed the energy last time because there's only three Fusion Strike Pokemon in play, but now with six in play, yeah, Drapion <laughs> can you know attack for negative energy pretty much. Yes. I mean, obviously, this isn't how it works, but it would be so funny if, like, you know, the attack costs you so much that you could, like, attach energy when you attack it. So yeah, like, sure. You know, that's, uh, <laughs> that's not how it works, though, just to absolutely clarify sure. it. Uh, you can't have negative attack costs. So, Patricia, now with the battle VIP pass, an excellent start to the game. It looks like two comfy were grabbed right away. Is that what she really wants to go for here? Just try to value the setup as much as possible? It looks like it, yeah. And I think at this point, it makes sense because there is quite a bit that you need to find if you want to pull off this attack with the Drapion. And I think uh, getting the means to actually dig through the deck to get there is more important at this point. And I think it's important to note too, Patricia doesn't have to attack with Drapion. And in fact, she may not even want to, right? It was so good in game one because Ricardo only had one Mew in play. In this game, it may be less strong. So we could see her go for instead of a 2-2-2 two, two, two prize line, just a Mew VMAX knockout, Mew VMAX knockout. Yeah, which of course uh, would be even easier, right? So, so as the prize mapping goes, and that's really where Drapion is at its strongest if it can KO a Mew VMAX, so it makes sense to go for that. Chorus's Experiment, one of the premier cards of the previous expansion, Lost Origin, letting you look at the top five cards of your deck, 
put three of them into your hand, and then send two more to the Lost Zone. So this is how we fuel the Lost Zone, how we get more cards in there, and how you can eventually get to the attacks of the Sableye, how you can fuel your Cramorant as an attacker as well, and how you can even potentially use Mirage Gate, which we actually see it, Patricia is playing, which is a very interesting card to include in this version of the deck. Yeah, we normally see Mirage Gate more uh, focused on the more like slightly aggressive like Greninja builds, right? The ones that kind of focus more on doing like attack a multiple energy, uh, multiple energy attack cost attacks. But yes. normally in like the Sableye Charizard variants, we kind of don't see it. So the fact that it is in there could really bring a really nice surprise. Maybe attacking with Charizard earlier than otherwise you might yes. expect. And that, I have to imagine, is why it is in the deck, right? Yeah. So you can get the Charizard attack. Because previously, you know, I mean, with if we look at the list that Tord used to win Peoria, he could not attack with Charizard until your opponent was just at two prize cards remaining. There was no way to get an extra energy unless you, like, benched it and attached energies to it manually. Yeah, which yeah. most people wouldn't want to do, right? Pedro took a spin on that in his list that he used to win Warsaw, and he played the one Magma Basin Stadium card so that he could attack with Charizard one turn earlier. And this is kind of Patricia's evolution to that, adding the couple of Mirage Gates, give yourself that option. Yeah, and uh, yeah, uh, so funnily enough, I um, at Warsaw, I played Lost Box myself, but I played a list closer to what like Tord played, and when I saw, you know, Petra's list afterwards, I thought to myself, yeah, there were quite a few instances where, honestly, if I had the Magma Basin, that would have really helped out a lot, because sometimes you just do want to attack with that Charizard a little bit earlier, and yep. I'm sure, like you just said, that's exactly the mindset that Patricia was think had going into building this list and thinking, how can I attack the Charizard earlier, maybe just with Mirage Gate instead. This is a solid find here for Patricia, able to use the Escape Rope, force this Cramorant back into the active, and even though it's not a KO, hey, hitting for 110 damage for zero energy, that's pretty good. That spent innocently attack, of course, being able to be used because of lost provisions. If you have four or more cards in the Lost Zone, ignore all energy in this Pokemon's attack cost. Yeah, it's such, such a great ability. Oh, but we do see there now the Devastate, the Double Cross Switcher, going to uh, come out and attack the Oranguru. And actually, I like this a lot because I think that a lot of the time it's really underrated just how much consistency and flexibility the Oranguru offers you. So taking it off the board early on is going to make the rest of the game really a lot more awkward for Patricia. And the Path to the Peak has remained in play. That too, yes, in indeed. So that's uh, going to... So the Patricia still needs to find like you know, more outs in order to you know, be able to you know, actually make mount counter attack right. or something. So Colrus's Experiment sees five cards. That's a lot of cards. There is a lost vacuum. Oh. Now, the question is, does she have a way to get Drapion? <sighs> Not here in this Colrus, but in the hand, maybe there's something. Yeah, and I mean, no matter what, you've got to hit the lost vacuum, right? Because Of course. Like, this is the turn where if you can take, take an attack with Drapion, you're going to be in very, very good stead to win. But you need to find it, of course. So there's one piece of the puzzle. There is the lost vacuum. Maybe going to try and start yeah, digging with some Comphase, see if you can find like, a Quick Ball or just a Drapion directly. I uh, see... I think it was Escape Rope is the grab. Path to the Peak can go to the Lost Zone. That's the only stadium either of these players play. Yep. And that is the seventh card. So now Mirage Gate is active. Yes, it is. Um, now, here's an interesting question. Could Patricia actually power up oh, is that in one turn? Is the Drapion there in the hand? Wait, it is, oh, it yes. Is. She's already got it. So that oh. means that this Mew in the active is going to go down. She's sitting on the Lost Vacuum and the Switch Cart in order to get this Comfy out of the active spot. So this is going to be an absolutely devastating turn from Patricia's side. Has the, has the Mirage Gate ready to go as well? Seven in the Lost Zone, but probably not going to, doesn't want to use it this turn, doesn't really need to. Has right. to figure out what to Lost Zone here off the Lost Vacuum. Of course, in order to use its effect, you do have to send one of your own cards to the Lost Zone. Indeed you do. And uh, we do see there, Patricia choosing to Lost Zone and Escape Rope, thinking, I have enough of these already, I can afford to get rid of one, and I still have the Switch card to switch into the Drapion. Massive. I mean, this is just a huge, huge turn for Patricia. Three prize cards, and you can see why she didn't really feel the pressure to go super hard for the Drapion no. on turn one, because taking this three prize KO, I mean, Ricardo's only other option is to attack with another Mew VMAX. And not only that, but if he does that, he has to do it with a Mew VMAX. So that's already damaged because the Mew's already damaged. There's no way to attack with a fresh Mew VMAX this turn. Yes, that is absolutely true. Patricia now taking three prizes. All of the oh. fire energy still remaining. So Radiant Charizard's not going to be an option to close the game out. That would have been potentially something she could have done uh, because this Mew already has some damage on it. Radiant Charizard could have potentially gotten there. Over on Ricardo's side, we do see Ultra Ball. Looks like just two lost vacuums hitting the discard pile. Yeah, and I mean, this is double devastating, right? Because like we just said, Ricardo's forced to evolve this now. If Patricia, like, without more than likely, the Stripping gets KO'd. But if it does, all Patricia needs to do is find an ordinary rod, but... That is a huge play from Ricardo. The Roxanne, one of the strongest cards from that Astral Radiance expansion. 
You can only play it if your opponent has three or fewer cards remaining. Each player shuffles their hand into their deck. You get six. Your opponent gets two. This is such a great way to try to come back in a game. Yeah, this is exactly what Ricardo needs to do this turn. Like, Ricardo needs to minimize the chances of Patricia hitting this Ordinary Rod because Ordinary Rod plus way to get Drapion plus a switch out wins, wins Patricia the yeah, game. Yeah, or just Clara as well. Patricia is, of course, playing two copies of that card ah, as well, yeah. so that could oh, even yes. just close it out. In which case, they just need the. Uh, well, oh no, then you'd be able to get back an energy and yeah, just retreat. So, yeah, Clara yeah. would be an insta win. Oof. So, yeah, Ricardo doing all he can to make sure that that doesn't happen. Again, going you know, correctly with the, with the Roxanne, but now it's kind of all up to fate. Yeah, needs to find the double turbo energy here. And I think if Ricardo can also find Path to the Peak, that would be huge, yes. right? Getting the Path to the Peak out would make it as hard as possible for Patricia to pull off the knockout. Yeah, and that's exactly what he's going to be digging for here, I'm sure. Although I don't believe that I see it so far. There's a, there's, there's a Rotom phone being played. He's going to grab a double turbo from that? Or is it, oh, no, no, that's just his hand. It okay. does, does need to play the Power Tablet. Yeah, yes. don't want to not do that. So Power Tablet now means that Mew will be able to reach for the one-hit knockout. Quick Ball can thin one more card out. We still have three Fusion Strike systems to work through. So with two Path to the Peak remaining in the deck, Ricardo's got a decent shot to find it here. Actually, I think it might only be one because didn't Ricardo have to discard a Path to the Peak? Oh, no, Patricia lost zone one. Yeah, Patricia lost zone one. Maybe there isn't. Maybe it's only one in the deck, but yeah, regardless, yeah, still lots of it. cards going to be able to yeah, drive. Yeah, exactly. And he needs to find it here, like yeah. you mentioned. Okay, so here we go. Fusion Strike system number two. Don't think I see it yet. No, another Forest Seal Stone, Boss Disorders. Plenty of ways to thin some cards out, though. Yeah, Choice Spell can go down as well. Could maybe even play the Lost Vacuum just for the sake of, you know, thinning out, though. I guess you get rid of one of the Forest Seal Stones. You don't really need them anymore. Yeah, that's an easy discard. Or just Ultra Ball thins even more cards out, potentially. Yeah. Either way, going to be thinning out as much as possible for Fusion Track System number three, just digging for that pass to the peak. Here yeah, we go. That is the one thing Ricardo is looking for here. Let's see if he's able to find it. Drawing five cards this time. There, there it is. is the path. Yep. Huge draw. What he needs to try to slow Patricia down as much as possible. Yep. So Patricia can still win on this next turn, which is so crazy, but it's going to involve a lot of cards. Yep. Clara, Lost Vacuum, and that would do it. So yes. that two combination of cards could close it out. Let's see if she's able to piece it together. That would be crazy if she could. Oh, that's Ordinary Rod. Okay, that is an option as well. Yes, so... Uh, Ordinary Rod into, like, Colrus or something like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, but looks like is Patricia going to play Hisuian Heavy Ball first? Yep, looks like it thinning a card out of the hand. We see two fires and the one VIP pass remaining. Yes, yes sure enough, Patricia, you did prize both of your fire energies, yeah, as not, unlucky as it is. Yeah, not going to be happy about that. But in this instance, actually, doesn't matter too much. You know, this isn't, the Radiant Charizard isn't what is the go-to here. It's got to be that, that Drapion. So... Gonna go for the flower selecting. One, two, does. I think oh. that's a chorus. Oh, that's big. That's gonna be. You have to dig a lot, lot more. And Patricia now. does not have to win the game this turn. She no. is still very much ahead in this game, so we could even see her take a turn to try to use Sableye potentially if she can find a psychic energy. Does need one more card in the Lost Zone to be able to do that? Yes, that is true. So currently with nine, just needing that one extra to be able to start attacking with a Lost Mine. So, but now looks like, yes, gonna go for the Ordinary Rod and. Probably going to get back. Uh, definitely the Drapion, but maybe the Psychic Energy as well. Oh, uh, the Oranguru for another important piece, another thing to dig with. Yeah, just going to get back everything she can. Yeah, Oranguru is a decent thing to put back. It gives you one more card you can potentially see. I could understand maybe not putting it back into the yeah, deck because yeah, sure. it doesn't immediately win you the game potentially, but definitely want the Psychic Energy because that will give you the Sableye option, and I do believe she has a Sableye in hand. Yeah, so yeah, definitely the correct call to put everything back that she can and... Uh, Imagine after doing that, going to go straight away for that chorus experiment and yeah, see what she can find. I mean, like we said, I said possible for her to win this turn, but really not mandatory at no, all. Not at all. She's in such a good spot. She can take it slow. At minimum here, I think she would like to just at least attack with something, be it yes. the Cramorant or the Sableye. So let's see. Is there five off the top? I don't believe I see the vacuum. I do see a Psych Engine. Oh, there is a Clara. Okay. Uh, Clara's kind of awkward because you've just put the uh, <laughs> the... Drapion back into the deck. Yes. And it looks like Psychic Energy actually will hit the discard, the Lost Zone, excuse yeah. me. Yeah, and there was a scoop up there as well, so imagine probably going to play that and, uh, yeah, just try and start digging some more with come phase, uh, do some more flower selecting, get some more cards out of the deck, because you still have the switch card to end on, so they yep. can switch to the Cramorant and spit innocently. Air Balloon is one of the options here. looks like Comfy as the other one. I think Air Balloon is probably pretty valuable here, giving you that pivot option. Yeah, and I think as well, it, you, you never really want to bench four come phase, right? So, oh no, it's a Sableye. Sableye. Oh. That makes it a little tougher of a decision. Yes. Because I think there is already a Sableye in the Lost Zone. 
Yes, I believe so. So maybe at this point, I mean, Patricia is just committing to not using it, given that she did put the Psych Genji in there as well. So maybe just thinking, okay, at this point, I just give up on that and uh, I just accept that I want to attack with other things. Is that the Drapion? No, it must uh, not be, because no. it's going to the Lost Oh, yeah, okay, it's your own Guru. Okay, yeah. fair enough. And I think maybe Patricia is not worried about attacking with Sableye because she, at minimum, can just attack with Cramorant, right? And Ricardo, of course, can just use Psychic Leap to try to put all this damage back into the deck, which is maybe what he would choose to go for. So she is not too pressed to try to go for the Sableye here. Yeah, no, and I think, I think that's a fair decision to make. Um, I, I think maybe, actually, overall, the main thing she wants to do was to, yeah, put some damage on board, but also do as many Flower Selections as possible, just to really try and thin the deck as much as she can sure. so that she can you know, find her way into her outs to win, be it, be it the Drapion or maybe even yeah, some other kind of attacking threat. So interesting choice here. There's an escape rope in hand, but also air balloon. So Patricia has to decide, do I want to attack into this active Mew or do I want one more flower selecting? What is more valuable to me in this spot? And it seems that the damage is more valuable right now. Yeah. Wanting to force Ricardo to try to go for a Psychic Leap here, which interestingly enough would take the only three prize Pokemon out of play. Yeah, so that, that could be potentially a little bit awkward. Because, um, oh, obviously, then at that point, uh, there would be no Mew, Mews left, but then Ricardo couldn't really bring up the other Mew either. So maybe Ricardo could, kind of has to then just bring up a Genesect and then could potentially leave himself a little bit stuck. So, but, you know, but yeah, at this point, there's really no choice. You have to Psychic Leap, because otherwise the game finishes. And funny zero. enough, it does actually get the KO on the Cramorant due to the 60 damage that was placed on that Cramorant earlier oh. on from that yes. Drapion. Normally, in order to get a Psychic Leap KO, you have to combine a bunch of power tablets with it, not something that Ricardo had to worry about in this spot. No, absolutely not. So, um, but, in, but in this instance, because, yeah, that, that was the damage had to be put on, uh, that opportunity was open to Ricardo. So, yeah, now back to Patricia. See, Ricardo did have to bring up the Genesect. Patricia's going to do a few more flower selectings, just really... Yeah, try to find that uh, Drapion again. Going to loss in Manaphy. No use in this matchup. So, <laughs> Ricardo actually has a realistic path to win here. If Ricardo can just psychic leap two turns in a row, right, putting, taking a knockout, but keeping a three prize Pokemon out of play, and Patricia's not able to pull off some sort of attack this turn to try to put pressure on a two prize Pokemon, um, then Ricardo actually has a, a decent strategy to try to win this game. Yeah, very much so. So, now it's going to be on uh, Patricia to. <laughs> Do all the flowers selected in the world? I, mean, I think at this point, yeah. Except now, I kind of have to Sableye because yeah. I need to, you know, put some spread some damage and actually set 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 up a potential win condition for myself. Yeah, we've got way too many cards in the loss <laughs> zone now. We, we just need to write enough up there at this point, to, more than enough to to satisfy every single possible condition that you could have. Ultra Ball looks like. Oh, are we back? Yeah, I think we're back over to Ricardo now. Yeah, the Ultra Ball way. is being played. So Patricia not attacking. Okay, this is huge. If Ricardo can use the Psychic Leap, get a KO on this Comfy, he just needs to use one Power Tablet in order to do it, thanks to the damage reduction of Double Turbo. Put that Mew V Max back into the deck. Ricardo, I think, is actually in a really solid spot. And this is very, very clever heads up play from Ricardo. He knows exactly what he needs to do to avoid falling prey to that, that Drapion trap. And that's kind of exactly how he's formulating this strategy right now. So it's, all it's going to come down to now is him finding another Mew and a way to retreat the Genesect. So that's, those are his two key finds this turn. A super awkward thing here, though, for Ricardo is I think he has discarded all of his Lost Vacuums. They've all gotten like oh. ultra balled away throughout the course of this game or Cramomatic, something like that. So he may have one left in the deck, but I've seen quite a few hit the discard pile already. So this Path to the Peak may uh, kind of hinder some of those plays a little bit. Yeah, I, I do remember seeing earlier there was an ultra ball where it was literally just a double discard of a, of a Lost Vacuum. So, yeah, and given that... I did find sure I saw another one at some point uh, getting right, hit right. his card as well. So that's, it makes things awkward because now you can't use your draw engine, which you'd use to find the things that you need to find. Right. Yeah, needs to find a switch card. That's uh, honestly step one. You know, And then having the power tablet and another Mew V to copy, those are all things that you would really love to see. Yeah, so There's a Cramomatic in hand. So that could be a way to find things. Yeah, although Already a power tablet as well. So I guess maybe he's probably just debating. Oh, and a switch card. Oh. He's, he's got most of the pieces he needs. Okay, wow. So... So he's just missing the Mew then, really? Yeah. But yes, and a Marnie in hand, though, could find those other pieces, potentially. Yeah, so maybe at this point he's just thinking about what's the best way for me to sequence this to make it more the most likely to happen. That's Because uh, what you could do, if you wanted to pull it off this turn, you could actually just chromatic discard the Echoing Horn. If you hit heads, sure. you've got it, right? So. Yep. Yeah, Horn's not super relevant at this point. The Drapion's already been put back into the deck. That would be a way you could potentially try to close out the game for two prizes, right? Yeah. So Horn can be a pretty easy discard off the Cramomatic. There's the switch card. 
That's step one. Power tablet in hand is step two. Or Cramomatic could be step two. You know, or, or the horn itself. Okay. So what even is that to bring back? Uh, Just I guess. something useless, try to clog the bench up a little bit. Oh, possibly, yeah. No, I, I can I can see that. So that uh, gives Patricia a little bit less space to work with. But actually going to power... Gonna, cram away the power tablet and does hit a tails oh. does play the marnie so this will find more cards but this must mean ricardo doesn't feel confident in the ability to pull off the psychic leap play or maybe he just doesn't quite see the line potentially or doesn't want to go for it in this spot yeah it's always important to remember obviously the players are working with you know, more information than we are of perhaps course. they can see things that we don't yes, so of course uh, that can sometimes inform the way some of the lines go but and oh we do see the ultra ball there actually yep it looks like does find the ultra ball so that can get the mu v and does find a power tablet again so <laughs> Gets bailed out a little bit, does still have the line available. Yeah, so it so worked out well for him. So, yeah, Ultra Ball now going to find that Mew V. And uh, with the Power Tablet, like we mentioned before, going to be able to get, use Psychic Leap and get a knockout. And, yeah, this is now a very, very devastating position for Patricia because she can't win next turn, but Ricardo yeah. absolutely can. And does go for the Psychic Leap and is actually... Ooh, is he going to choose to leave? Does choose to leave the Mew VMAX in play. Okay, must not feel confident that he could get into the pieces to attack next turn. That must be what his thought process is. It, yeah, but this is be. a massive opening here for Patricia. Yeah, Patricia has got to be thinking to herself, oh, you know, this could have been absolutely devastating for me, but now I actually have an opportunity to win here. Just needs to find that last Lost Vacuum and the Drapion. That, that's all she needs to find. Yep. And does already have a Colrus in hand. We see this Comfy with the Air Balloon come to the active. Mirage Gate can even shuffle the deck as well, because if there was good cards put on the bottom yep. for the Marnie. So here we go, five cards. There's a Clara. I see another Mirage Gate, and uh, oh, that's not really... It's not the win, we can say that much. A quick We're, ball. Okay. So that's that's decent. That can find the Drapion. We can thin that out of the deck right away. And then now it's going to be up to these Comfies here. These Flower Selectings. Can we find the Lost Vacuum? This is all it comes down to. So I imagine that'll be exactly what your position is going for. Yeah, quick ball. Discard the Battle VIP <laughs> Pass. Just grab that Drapion. It's in the deck. I see it right there. Oh. And this is where the earlier chain of flower selections really pays off because now the deck is super, super thin. Yes, so Patricia's yes. odds of hitting this are so much more. 19 cards in the Lost Zone may be a record. I don't know that we've quite seen that much. And it's not over yet. We're sending number 20 here looking for the Lost Vacuum. Does she find it? I think that was it. Was that it? I think it was. Yes, that's it. Drapion, Lost Vacuum. That's it. It's Gets game. rid of the Clara and now can retreat to Drapion. One hit KO that Mew V Max. And Patricia wins a tight game two, but a convincing two game set. Yes, huge, huge congratulations to Patricia there. Playing exactly to her outs, knowing exactly what she needed to do to hit them into. But really, I think the biggest takeaway from that game is that how important it is to sequence your deck to its maximum effectiveness. We saw. You know, Patricia really in game two prioritized as many flower selections as possible, and that meant in later on the deck was thin enough that she could uh, you know do minimal digs and still find the outs to actually win. And you have to wonder what might have happened had Ricardo put that Mew V Max back yes. into the deck. Patricia did not have a great way to take three prizes, and no, no. Uh, Ricardo would have only been left with one. And I have to imagine that the whole reason Ricardo did that was because he just did not feel like he would be able to draw into the Mew next turn. He was yeah. like, even though this does leave my opponent's win condition in play, it's my only way that I can theoretically win the game. So yeah. sometimes that's just what you have to do, and that might have been what Ricardo decided was the best. Yeah, especially given, as we already mentioned, of course, there's so many, so many like the lost vacuum's already gone, so he's thinking to himself, oh, I don't really have any way of like turning on my draw engine again. So again, like you just said, that makes it more likely that I miss my chance to hit my Mew again, and that doesn't make me comfortable enough to be able to you know, send it back into the deck and hope I can refind it. And that's where sometimes discarding those lost vacuums a little early can come back to bite you, especially in this deck specifically where you're playing your own path to the peaks. It was Ricardo's own path to the peak that yeah. inhibited his ability to just kind of find those last pieces, do what he needed to do. It would have been so strong if he could have shuffled that piece back in. Yeah, and uh, but unfortunately, it just didn't really quite work out that way. So yeah, Patricia taking a you know, back and forth, a pretty convincing 2-0 win. Huge congratulations to her. She'll be starting off now 2-0 and in this LAIC. Got to be feeling pretty happy with that start, I imagine. And something I loved from that game is that we got to see, you know, Patricia utilize two different strategies, right? The yes. Two prize, two prize, two prize in game number one. But in game number two, just going for two knockouts, only knocking out two Mew Max. Now, it did almost come back to bite her. Yes. If, if Ricardo had shuffled it back in and was able to find the knockouts in a theoretical world, right, um, in order to find the pieces to get that one last prize, Ricardo very reasonably could have won that game. Yeah, very much so. And, uh, you know, there was always that that peril there, right? And I'm sure Patricia probably would have been aware of it as well. She's thinking, oh, course, you know, if yes. Ricardo does this, then there is this potential for me to be you know, completely blown out. But, you know, with the with the sequencing that Ricardo did earlier, kind of backing himself to a little bit of a corner, 
then him not feeling cut enough to like you know make that move, and then Patricia able to capitalize it on from there and win. Yep, and that is how it went down. Ricardo sitting at one and one, not a bad place to be. It's, no, no, it's, it's fine. okay. You've started the tournament off with a win. You get a loss. It, it's really difficult to win. I mean, we see it happen time uh, to time. A 9-0, especially at the international level, is really difficult. But yeah, yeah. It, it's pretty rare. I mean, Adam Hawkins, I believe, has done it two times at, uh, or maybe one time at NAIC, and then last year John Ng, I think, went 9-0 at NAIC this past season. So, but both both uh, absolutely phenomenal players as well. Yes, in their own right. And uh, both here as well, I believe. I do. Uh, we were talking to uh, both. Well, I was to talk to both of them a little bit at the hotel, and yeah, they're both looking to make their, na their names themselves here at the LAIC too. Absolutely, excited to see. I mean, so many great players. This, these international championships just really do bring the best from all the different regions uh, in the Play Pokemon circuit, so I'm excited to see how they interact. Obviously, the, the most represented region here, naturally, would be Latin America. Of course, of uh, course. You know, and probably Brazil as well, being yes. the most represented country overall, so... Um, I do think we're trying to get an interview ready. We'll be going to that very shortly. I'm excited to see what Patricia's thinking about in that last game, uh, how, the, how that went down, because it was it ended up being kind of close. Yeah, yeah, it did. And um, and there were so many easy points as well where it really could have gone away. Like, I mean, game one, less so, right? Game one, I think we already saw the writing on the wall very early on. It was just a great beyond, great beyond devastation. But in game two, there's definitely like a, the sort of the thought process that went into it from like both sides, I think, which I've been very, very interested to hear about too. Absolutely. And yeah, Ricardo, obviously, like we mentioned, one and one, still an okay place to be. And I got to feel like Mew is a decent play for the tournament this weekend. Yes. This is probably, uh, this version of itself, it's like the DTE build, but it's kind of its own version of the deck, right? Where you are trying to get a little bit more control over the game, try to disrupt your opponent a little bit more, you know, similar to that Garbo Toxins or Garbo yes, deck that yes. you were mentioning earlier on before we got into the game. So uh, an interesting play for the weekend. I'm excited to see... Um, you know, how Ricardo will end up doing. But I do believe we have our interview ready. Let's go down to Patricia and see how she's feeling about that last game.